Hi, I'm John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to our Facebook Live event on online MBA programs, and in particular, the Kelly Direct program at Indiana University's Kelly School of Business. We have with us three guests today. We're going to talk a little bit about, about what, what is an online MBA program like? And how does it differ from an on-campus program? Who is it best suited for? What does it cost? What can you expect from it? And we'll talk about the perceptions of online degrees versus traditional on-campus degrees. First, let me introduce our three guests. Uh, smack in the middle of our panel at Indiana University in Bloomington is Dr. Ramesh Venkat who is the chair of the Kelly Direct MBA program and also the chair of other MS programs that Kelly has. Uh, then we also have, and this is unusual, and I think it tells you something about the Kelly program itself. We have the executive director of graduate career services, uh, a good friend of mine, Eric Johnson. Uh, and I say that's unusual because in many online programs, there's little to no career services support for students and graduates. That's a big differentiator at Kelly. And then we also have with us the Director of Admissions, Eric Spoonmore. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, John. So let's just talk in general, uh, Ramesh, about where online MBA programs are these days. There's a lot of them there's, uh, at, at many different price points. I mean, one of the big surprises to me about how they have evolved is that in the early days, there was a belief that the big brands would trump everyone else. Because after all, the university that was regional or local uh, no longer had that physical boundary around it uh, where it could claim territory. You could live anywhere in the world to take advantage of an online uh, degree program. So why wouldn't you go to a great school like Indiana University? Uh, why, why do so many people are so constrained by their geography and they're going to schools that have lesser reputations, uh, not the quality of students or faculty, and they're not availing themselves of uh, the better programs. Why is that? Um, well, I think we should play, take a step back and, uh, and you know, look at the uh, evolution of uh, how online programs came. So, you know, for the longest time, online MBA programs were primarily uh, uh, available through not so well reputed institutions or you know, some, uh, many of them were for-profit institutions. We were one of the few uh, players who, uh, in the market who decided to come in uh, and create an online MBA experience uh, and, uh, at the same time being a top-ranked business school in the full-time MBA space. Um, so I think because of that, there's probably a lack of market awareness probably and a lot of uh, misperceptions about online MBAs that are slowly being uh, eliminated because now we have more um, well-reputed schools coming into the market um, and that is allowing more people to, uh, to understand that there are alternatives to um, you know, uh, taking a break from your career for two years or one year uh, to pursue an MBA that are going to give you the same outcomes, the same amount of uh, the learning, the uh, business acumen, the soft skills development, the networking opportunities, uh, the uh, alumni uh, network creation, uh, that you get out of an MBA, uh, quant skills, you know, all those pieces. Uh, and yet you can continue to um, uh, have the uh, ability to, uh, uh, to pursue your career and not take a break from it. So, um, so obviously in the online option, the greatest single advantage is flexibility. You can hold your job, you can apply what you learn in the program to your job immediately. So I'm assuming that in general, an online MBA program is best for someone who wants to enhance their current opportunity. So you want a promotion, you want a raise, you want greater responsibility in your current job. Is that true? 
That used to be true, uh, I would say, five, six years ago. If I were to characterize our population, you know, five or six years ago, it was primarily that population who uh, uh, wanted to do that. I would say that's still, uh, you know, a majority of our population uh, who wants to, what are, we, we call them career accelerators. So they want to stay in the firm. They, uh, you know, uh, want to enhance their, um, broaden their opportunities within the firm and they need the business skill set to round off uh, their knowledge base and their experience. But increasingly, we're also finding that, you know, people who would traditionally opt for a full-time uh, program, though, you know, what we call as career switchers, um, are also starting to look at the online option, mainly, again, because now we have uh, players like us and other schools who are well-reputed and well-respected in the market that are, uh, offering online offerings and as we are educating them about what we do, they are realizing, well, why do I need to take two years off, stop my career progression in my current firm, uh, lose my salary for the two years and, and so on. Um, let me go ahead and do this option and I can still then switch out uh, at the end of those, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, how many hours it takes to take the MBA. And many times the firms will also give them a little bit of support to, to pursue the MBA, so that also makes it a sweetens the pie a little bit. So, so I would say you know it's, it, it has it has morphed uh, a little bit, and I think uh, Eric might want to have some thoughts on the three buckets that uh, pursue the degree because he, these are the career side. Of it. Yeah, well, I would say I agree completely that we're seeing an increasing number of students who are looking to make a career transition who are starting to pursue their degree online. And Ramesh is absolutely correct. It's because of the reputa reputation of the programs who are now offering these degrees. Um, and it's nice because I think the online population, as you mentioned, brings flexibility to the table in a couple of different forms. And one of those is that many of our online students are able to start jobs year rounds, uh, whereas an in-resident population is largely looking at starting in a June, July, August timeframe. And so we're seeing a lot of companies, whether it be like a Deloitte or an EY, who are going to some of the well-reputed schools and beginning to recruit their online students for positions that can start relatively immediate as they have staffing needs and they know they're getting a quality student, they're getting someone that has great work experience, has had great classroom experience, um, and has the flexibility to fill roles that are more of an immediate need. So uh, those opportunities and those stories are certainly something that creates additional demand among those students who are thinking about making a transition in their career. And I think that's why we're seeing an increasing number of students who are coming here. Uh, career accelerators are, as Ramesh said, still a really big portion of the population, but even they someday hope uh, that their career takes them a, into more of a general management direction within their firm or maybe to another firm within their industry. And so at least, you know, going to a school that understands lifelong career management uh, or a program that provides those kind of resources even after the program ends uh, can also be an attractive career option for a lot of uh, online students. So. And what's what's the current class profile look like at Kelly Direct? Like, wh how many years experience? Sure. Uh, male, female, international breakdowns, that kind of thing. Yeah, uh, I think at, at a high level, I, uh, I will, um, I can probably tell you that you know, um, we probably uh, you know bring in uh, you know a class of about you know uh, three hundred students over the year. Um, and our last class, as an example, you know, our uh, average uh, age was about 31 uh, years. Uh, women, we had 31% women. Average years of work experience was 7%. Everybody was working full time. Uh, we had a, a, a large age range. We had somebody as young as 23, uh, all the way to, uh, you know, somebody who was 58 years old in the program, but you know, obviously our average was in the, 30, in the 30s. So it's a little bit more experience than you would see in a full-time right. program, uh, you know, um, and our, you know, uh, other metrics are very comparable to uh, strong full-time programs. Right, that's great. So what are the smart questions that a potential applicant should be asking schools that offer online MBA programs? Sure. So I think, I think uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, as you know, John, very well, uh, the MBA is as much about the education as it's about the experience, right? So I think, uh, you know, as people look at an online MBA, probably the biggest mistake they can make is focus just on what's the education piece of it, right? Like what are the classes, right? Because that is probably uh, one dimension, but 
uh, the transformation into a full-fledged MBA graduate happens with the experience that uh, accompanies the education. So on the education side, I think the questions to ask is, who are the people who teach the classes and how are the classes taught, right? So for example, at Kelly, you know, if you look at our classes, it'll be, a, you know, every class is a 12-week quarter. Uh, every week you uh, get a chance to um, uh, interact live with the faculty member uh, on a given night, uh, just like you would if you were in the classroom. The only difference is you're not in the classroom. Uh, you have the flexibility that we record the sessions. If you don't attend, you can always watch the recording so you're not forced to attend. Uh, but before you attend the classroom, most likely you would have watched some other videos or some other recordings of content that allow you to get better prepared to come into the classroom uh, for the live interaction, right? So the, the, what we call typically the flipped classroom model. So, but the, but, the, uh, but the key thing at Kelly, and just to finish it out, every week you might have an assignment, every two weeks you'll have an assignment due. So it's not self-paced learning, it's more structured, directed learning uh, that you do, right? Um, so if you think, compare that and you kind of listen to it, it, it doesn't feel as different as, you know, much more different than what you would probably experience in a regular classroom. The only difference being we're doing it like a session like this with a Zoom or as opposed to sitting in the classroom, right? You can still see all your classmates and, and so on and so forth. But the other thing we also do at Kelly is that the classes are actually taught by faculty who are full-time faculty in the Kelly School. And that is actually probably a very important question to to ask of whatever programs you're looking at is who's actually doing the teaching. Um, because, you know, uh, that, that component varies across various schools and we at Kelly have, have chosen to invest in, in making sure that we have the people who are on our, our full-time faculty teach uh, all the classes, right? And so we own all the classes. So when I teach the online class, you know, I'm there every Monday night, you know, Honestly, I give the feedback myself. I actually record feedback as opposed to write the feedback to make it a little richer. Um, uh, so in some sense, actually, if you think about it, uh, even compared to a regular class on a full-time space, you know, I, I, you might actually get more feedback from me because I know that this is the one interaction I have with you online. So I, take, I probably take more time to make sure you get uh, richer feedback and so on. So anyway, the point is you need to ask those questions about who's teaching the classes, who's how are the classes taught? Because is, there are programs where everything is done completely asynchronously, and I think the challenge there would be that you're not actually going to get as much of the ability to ask questions and, and tailor the, uh, the learning to your needs and to your experiences, and also share your experiences, because again, as you know, in the MBA classroom, a lot of learning comes from sharing with each other, uh, and you know, so, that's, so those are the dimensions on the education side that I would uh, encourage you to ask. Uh, uh, on the experience side, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, offerings that are probably more like a full-time program, not required, still optional. Um, so the one thing that we do at Kelly uh, is in-residence components. So we, uh, people are required to come to the Kelly School twice during their program, once in the beginning and once closer to the middle of their program. And that serves multiple purposes. One, it allows them to uh, create a bond with their um, uh, fellow classmates in a, a more face-to-face -face, uh, setting, uh, which then allows you to create the lifelong bonds that you want and develop out of MBA programs that's important. It also allows us to develop some of the dimensions that, you know, still are hard to develop uh, online, like soft skills, like presentation skills and, ne and negotiations, and, and it allows us to provide personal coaching and so on. So we have those two components that are that are required, but then we do uh, experiential learning, consulting projects for, um, for both uh, companies in the U.S. as well as companies abroad. So we call our um, uh, projects for companies and not-for-profits abroad, we call them Agile, um, uh, which is stands for Accelerated Global Immersion and Learning. Um, and uh, so you are able to actually do a project uh, for a company from a, uh, from a different country, understand the culture, understand the business dynamics there. And then you also get to go visit that country and explore the cultural aspects and the dimensions live as well. And then we also do in-residence immersions where you go to a city, work for a company, um, 
you know, large corporations where they uh, give you an opportunity to engage in consulting projects. So those are dimensions that we have that are unique, uh, I think, to Kelly. Uh, and then, of course, uh, as you pointed out, one of the unique things we have at, at, at Kelly also is our career services component. Um, because we still believe whether you're doing, for whatever reason you're doing the online program, you can still benefit from having support for your career management. And I, I can let Eric talk a little bit more about that. Uh, and then the last part that I want to highlight is, um, you know, all our classes require teamwork um, and uh, engaging in teams. Um, and what you, of course, you're engaging in teams virtually, but that's the world, world these days anyway, right? How often do you actually have people in the same office in the same location? So you actually learn a lot more about how to work effectively in virtual teams as part of the online program. Uh, so again, a student should probably look at how much of their work is team-based, how much of the education is case-based. Like the typical question that you'd ask of an MBA program, you don't want to ask it a little bit deeper with online because not every program is made the same way. And I think the price points very much reflect that. I mean, you can go into a cheap online MBA program and just sit in front of a computer and see videotaped lectures from people <clears throat> with little of these other elements that you just described. I had the benefit of going to Bloomington during an in-residence session and seeing student teams present to executives of a Chinese company and a local company, uh, sort of a big company and a small company. The cases were actually developed by Kelly faculty. So they were original and meant to be inserted into the online program. And it's really a spectacular experience. It's uh, what you would expect in a phase program. <clears throat> Well, no, I mean, and th thanks for bringing that up because yes. I forgot to mention that we actually write a new case for every in-residence week, which is which is not cheap. And but you know we are, we are committed to. Again, the point is, uh, for the, from a student perspective, what you want to get the, uh, you know, you want to get the perspective that this that the school is committed to the online program as much as it is committed to any other program that they offer. And once you get to that point, you know you will get the right experience and the right outcomes. So. And one of the things you didn't mention, but I'll mention, is the fact that in relation to the experience, clubs and conferences are a very big part of an on-campus MBA experience. Very few online MBA programs actually fund clubs. Right. Uh, right. That is not true at Kelly, yeah. <clears throat> which has a number of clubs for online students. Can you talk a little bit about that and how they work? Yeah, so, you know, so we have an overall student leadership association, which is like our governing body, if you will, the, that uh, we give uh, funds to to help foster um, uh, more organic student based interaction and student based outcome development on various dimensions of uh, that are that can complement the education. Um, so within the student leadership development uh, organization also has uh, uh, chartered a bunch of clubs. So we have, for example, a consulting club, a women in business club, a finance club, a healthcare uh, club, et cetera. And so what they do is they hold regular events um, to, to help foster whatever goals and outcomes they decide as a club is important for their uh, student body. And of course, students can be a part of multiple clubs and so on. So, so often it takes the form of webinars uh, where they bring in some uh, speakers from the outside to talk about various aspects of, that are relevant to that um, to that uh, group. Uh, that also form, uh, creates a mechanism for career outcomes where they can actually, uh, if somebody is seeking um, a, a particular type of position, they can kind of talk to the student leaders and, and if the student leaders cannot figure out how to connect them with the right group, they come to us. So we, it becomes a conduit for requests from people with specific needs to us, so then we can help facilitate the connections are there as well. And often they'll, many of the co companies are starting to realize that they can use that forum as a way to talk about their needs and how uh, the students can fit into that. So, um, so they bring that in, which if you kind of compare what happens in full-time programs is very similar. Right? These are the typical types of outcomes that are there, only difference being you do it online. But the one thing we did, uh, I forgot to mention that the student leadership also does, which is really cool, um, is that we do what I call as global connect nights. So we pick two nights a year where um, 
at the same local time, um, uh, we we get uh, we fund uh, a dinner um, uh, at uh, a local restaurant for uh, students to get together and interact with each other uh, and their. Uh, you know, in a face-to-face -face setting, and we did it last time in like 32 cities, uh, including Tokyo and I forget there's one other uh, foreign location. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so this also kind of shows you that the fact that we are in 32 cities also shows you that we are actually attracting students from all over the country. Uh, you know, uh, we're not we're, we're not just attracting people from the Midwest, and we have a a bunch of West Coast cities, a bunch of East Coast cities. And they, I mean, really, that that is another way to complement your online education with the uh, with the in-residence component, right? You know, one of the most misunderstood aspects of uh, MBA education is that it's so much more than just the academics. And schools put particular attention on profound professional development personal development. Sure. And at Kelly, it's famous because you have what's called the Me Inc. program. Right. And many schools have actually come to you as a best practice school in this area of professional development, seeing what you're doing and then trying to duplicate it elsewhere. What are you doing in the online space in terms of personal development, professional development, kind of sanding down the rough edges of people uh, to make them more likely to be successful. I'll let Eric talk about it. Sure. Um, so I think I think a lot of that polishing happens in some of the activities that Ramesh already highlighted, like the clubs and like the classroom setting and like the global night. So those are extraordinarily valuable experiences for the purposes of networking and just general personal growth. Uh, but I think what I you asked earlier, what's a question people should be asking? I think getting a really good understanding of What's the level of career support for people in our online programs? What kind of access do they have to companies? Is that career support housed within the school or is it something that's outsourced? Like those would be the questions that would be on my mind. Um, here at Kelly, we've made a decision to really go all in on the professional development side for students in the online MBA program. Um, as you know, John, as we've talked before, um, all of the graduate programs here at the Kelly School of Business, all of them report up into, into me from a, from a professional development standpoint. So all of the career coaching, all of the corporate relations done for all of our graduate programs, the in-resident MBA and the online MBA is all done by the same team. And what's great about that is when we have a really busy week like we have this week, where we're doing a lot of internship recruiting for our in-residence MBA program, you know, my team will be spending time over lunch talking about the hiring needs over the course of the spring and why they ought to be considering our Kelly Direct online population. Um, and so having one central unit that's focused on, you know, student positive student outcomes from a career perspective, I think is a huge benefit to us. But when we get those students those opportunities, they have to be ready. And so following a very similar model as we do in our in-residence program, there's an element of self-discovery up front, uh, which then leads to networking, which then leads to interviewing, which then leads to improved on-the-job performance for your current firm or for a new firm, as we see with many of our working professionals. Uh, Me Inc., as you know, is something that's really hyper-focused on the self-awareness and self-development piece, as well as the networking piece. And we call it something a little different with Kelly Direct, it's Propel. I think over time, we'll just go with one title would be my guess, uh, because the elements of the program are that similar. Um, up front, we really want our online students to spend some time, even as they begin the program, right prior to day one, why are you doing this? You know, what are what is your objective? Are you doing this to leave the job that you're in over time? Are you doing this to obtain a new position over time? Why or why not? Uh, what are your relevant skills? What are your values? What are your interests? And especially on the skill side, how do you want to tailor your experience in the online MBA program in order to help you achieve your objectives over time? And what I like about our program is that there are enough electives and opportunities and, and dual degrees with our MS programs that somebody can really build a nice portfolio in the classroom and in the experiences and then with their coaches in order to, to create a nice resume and LinkedIn profile and just a, a become a very competitive candidate for positions. Um, they'll work directly with coaches on our team. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching that's available. Once students have gone through a series of these assessments and some online videos, just to get the basics out of the way, right? What is a, what is a 
uh, an effective LinkedIn profile look like? Like we have a series of professional webinars that we ask our students to participate and then they'll actually meet with live coaches. Some of that live coaching will take place here in Bloomington in person as part of these immersion weeks. But then over time, uh, my coaches work with the students in the online space and they will, will help them with their own individual career plans and their own individual career execution over time. So I think that there's an awful lot of work put in in terms of not just pr programs and workshops, but also one on one personal coaching to help help students achieve on their own terms. What about outcomes? Because, you know, the outcomes in a regular MBA program are pretty apparent. It's basically, did you get a job offer at graduation three months later and at what pay level? <clears throat> but in the online space where most of the people obviously are already working, how do, you, how do you measure what the outcomes of the degree are? Well, from, um, from, from yeah, at the end of the day, people are still hoping they're more successful in their careers, right? I think it, an honest assessment is still going to be that, that because we rely so heavily on student self-reporting, it is still a little early to have hardcore metrics around a lot of these. But some of the things that we track are among uh, our students who are in the program, what kind of salary increases do they tend to see from the time they begin the program? until the time they finish about 27 months or so later. And what we've seen is about a 29% increase in salary. And while it's, it's clear that working professionals are getting some kind of merit increase every year, regardless of whether they're getting a degree or not, a 29% increase in a little over two and a half years, or two, that's, that's an unusual increase for even a high performer. So I think it's very clear that a lot of that is attributed to uh, the, the quality of the work that they've done as well as any early promotions that they may have received. And in fact, we've seen that 64% of our students do receive promotions during the time that they're studying. And I think that's a really impressive number when you consider mm -hmm. that their time is divided between their full-time jobs, a, a full-time online program. I mean, this is, this is a heavy commitment from an academic perspective. And I'll be honest with you, John, from a coaching perspective, we don't demand any less of our students. If you're in this program and you want to make a successful transition, you will do the work. We will put you through the ringer that we put the in-residence MBA students through because we expect you to be that good when you do the interviews. And, and then because they tend to be a little older, they, they also tend to have families. And uh, for 64% of them to achieve a promotion during their time here, I think says a lot about the quality of the students and how hard they work. Uh, but also, I think it says a lot to the, the quality of both the academic as well as the career coaching that they get while they're here. Um, we are trying to put a lot of things in place to begin to differentiate a little among those who stay at their firm versus those who leave. Uh, of those who intend to be a switcher, what percent of them leave for bigger opportunities and whatnot. And the truth be told, we're still working through some of those systems to give accurate numbers. Uh, but the early anecdotal evidence is if you're willing to put in this kind of effort to get a promotion, then you are an attractive candidate to make a job switch if you would like. And we, do, we certainly do see those success stories all the time as well. Super. We have a lot of questions coming in and our time is running out. So I think we should just go to the questions. And Eric, I haven't it's Boomer. I haven't forgot about you, uh, and I'm sure that some of the questions are going to have uh, relate to admission standards and things sure. like that. Um, so, what are the questions? So, the first question um, has to do with the immersion experience. Um, the, the question is: uh, the uh, Dr. Ramesh mentioned the immersion experience, where you work for your inner city company. How does that work if you have a full-time job? Yeah, so, so the way it works is, let's assume, you know, I won't name a firm, but let's say you're we're going, for, we're going, to work, we're going to do a project for a firm located in Cincinnati. Um, and so, uh, so the project would basically, obviously, uh, you would end up flying into Cincinnati maybe for a day and a half to meet with the executives who are sponsoring the project, uh, understand the scope of the project, uh, you know, do a little bit of work to get yourself uh, situated with uh, respect to the company culture and what the expectations are. Then you would actually get course um, um, uh, education on the topic. So, you know, let's say the topic is analytics. So you will get more focused uh, training and education that relates to the project. So you have the right skill set to understand how to approach the project. You have a faculty helping you think through the project. You'll be working in teams. Most likely each of them may be working on a different aspect. 
so you kind of do that and then depending upon the nature of the client they may want you to come back and present or you may just do a virtual presentation at the end of it so usually it's either one one and a half day trip or one uh, or two one and a half day trips to the city where the company is located and the rest of the work is done online that's for our domestic immersions for our agile trips which are the uh, the study abroad uh, type of uh, consulting projects you tend to um, work on the the project charter and the, and the setup uh, in an online environment using zoom like technologies uh, and usually you either go uh, to the country in the middle of your project so you can get better uh, understanding of what the situation is after you've kind of done the groundwork or sometimes you do all the work up front and then you go to the country towards the end to make the presentation and that's usually a 10-day trip with the you basically have to take one week off of from work, and most people take, uh, if they're going to Asia, they usually add a vacation on the back end of it, usually, so. Great, so. let's get another question in. Um, a question about uh, requirements. Um, Good, the, this is Eric's shot, <laughs> finally. <laughs> yes, um, G, GMAT, GRE requirements, and how do they compare to the campus program requirements? Well, first, let me just start off with kind of going over the general requirements for application to our graduate online graduate management programs here at Kelly. And we have a very straightforward application process. It's going to be a highly personalized process. Um, and we utilize a, a holistic review uh, when looking at all applications. So we have a total of eight academic programs that we offer online. The flagship program would be the MBA and uh, seven other master's programs that each of those could also be combined with the MBA for a dual degree. Um, but our application process has five components to it. And I'll list these in no particular order of importance. Uh, you'll, you'll have to submit your official transcripts from all institutions that you attended, uh, higher education institutions. Uh, we'll require a GMAT or a GRE score and uh, the admissions committee here doesn't uh, uh, discriminate on which test you choose to submit. We view them both equally. Uh, a personal statement is also required with the application, and that's a 500-word essay that basically outlines your uh, goals and motivations for wanting to pursue graduate study here at Kelly. Uh, have to submit a resume that kind of outlines your uh, personal or your professional and academic background. And then we also have an interview component to the uh, application, and typically these are done by phone. Uh, and really what we're trying to do with the interview is get a better sense of a candidate's uh, focus, their management potential, team orientation, uh, communication skills, emotional intelligence, and that kind of stuff. So in terms of uh, uh, GMAT performance, it's an important component of the GMAT or GRE uh, performance, an important component of the application. Uh, the average score that we saw with our last admitted class was about right around 640. Um, it's rare that we see scores of 550 or below uh, admitted into the program, but again, we do utilize a, a, a very holistic approach uh, in evaluating all applications. Great. Do we have uh, some other questions there in the queue? Yeah, we, we just got about another minute or two. We had, um, and um, uh, uh, Eric did just touch on this, but we have a, a question about the specialization uh, programs and the uh, specialized master's programs, what kind of specializations sure. yeah. are available, and uh, so, uh, a little bit more about the specialized master's. Yeah, so, so it is one of the strengths we have here. We actually have seven, um, uh, specialized master's program so you know you can find them on the website but it's finance marketing supply chain IT management business analytics entrepreneurship and something else I think. Um, so um, so the the uh, uh, and, strategic, and strategic management so the uh, the nice thing is you can get a dual degree uh, which means that you can actually um, for 51 credit hours are uh, MBA, and for if you take the, all the right classes at the right time, with 12 more credit hours or 63 credit hours, you can get uh, an MS and an MBA. But the more important thing from your perspective is to understand that because we have all these master's programs, we have a lot of electives in all these areas, so you can actually pick and choose, or you can choose to concentrate in one of the areas. So if you choose to concentrate in finance, you have 21 credit hours of finance to, that you can take, and you have 18 hour, 18 hours of electives you can take in the program, so that'll allow you to get that going. All right, Which is that's another uh, differentiated point for the Kelly program. Uh, the fact that you can specialize in a specific area that you're really interested in, and there's a portfolio of courses that are electives that you can take. 
So listen, guys, we are out of time. I can't believe it. I could spend another hour in here and drill down more deeply on the program. Let me just say this. There are a lot of options out there. Kelly has been in the game probably longer than almost anybody. Uh, the devotion and the attention to detail that's paid by the staff there, and I've seen this up close and in person, uh, is exceptional. So if you're in the market for an MBA that's going to be online, uh, and if you want to just explore the field, uh, even if you may not end up going to Kelly, you should call these folks up, ask the hard questions, uh, get the information you need to make the right choice for you. Ramesh and the two Eric's, thank you for joining me today. Sorry for our early technical glitch, and thank you all of you out there for watching and listening. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quads. Thanks, John. Thank you, John.